Hello, thank you once again for joining us. We are here about to watch Germany versus Belgium. I am Bex McLaughlin and I'm commentating with... Martin Gantenberg. Welcome everybody. I'm very excited for this game. Of course, Matty is German, so you're going to back Germany, right? I'm going to back Germany, but I'm going to try to tone it down a bit. <laughs> That's okay. I'll support Belgium. It's fine. It's fine. The teams are doing their chance. It's a battle of the black, white, and yellow at this point, but of course, both teams can't have the yellow on their jerseys because of the snitch. So, black versus red. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Germany just... They've got chance for every single player, so they're just going to do the chant for every single player on the starting lineup right now. I think they're done. All right. I don't want to go on stereotypes, but that's not particularly efficient, is it? Surely one, two, three, Germany would also do, you know, the That's job. what they do at the start. I think it's fun. Don't always have to be efficient. We just have to change the rules, right? Well, I don't know about that. Ask Niklas Müller. If we're talking about fun, though, uh, Team Belgium, team bonding exercise this week, the great head shaving of 2019, uh, a good chunk of the of the guys on Team Belgium shaved their heads this week. Just because? Um, I've got a theory. You know, you look over at Team Germany, you've got the chaser, Tom Rolop, over there. You've got beaters like Leon Burgers, shaved head for years, very successful. I think Belgium's just trying to, like, get the edge again by having more people with shaved heads. I've been going wrong with these. Ever since my highlight 2015 when I shaved my head, that was my best season. So I have to get those clippers. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe we'll see. So really, it's a battle of the shaved heads. It really is. We're gonna see. Maybe tomorrow in the final, both teams shave their heads. It's gonna be exciting. <laughs> uh, shockingly, not many of the women opted in to shave their heads for this tournament. I guess they're awesome enough as it as it is. So they don't need the gimmick. Yeah. I see. True, true. <laughs> when you've got the skill, you don't need to shave your head. And, uh, honestly, when it's about, what, 35 degrees, it's like, is that the best thing? The smartest thing to, like, take the covering away from your head? But I mean, it's not as warm, but looking at some of the people with shaved heads, that are, especially those that are not used to it, it's going to get sunburned pretty quickly. Oh, because uh, Team Nora obviously just finished their match, and uh, they did their chant. Like, yeah, we're going to go for the shade, for the shade. Yes, shade, 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 yes. As fast as the shade as they've been hustling around the field. <laughs> oh. So, it's what I like Team Germany, Team Belgium. They both, both teams have put in a lot of training hours for this tournament. They both have standing squads. They train regularly. The advantage Belgium has, of course, is they, have, they can train for one day on a weekend and then fall back to the other side of Belgium because it's, you know, the size of a stamp. Um, but G Team Germany trained yeah, a lot. Yeah, Team Germany well. trained a lot. Like, it didn't stop them that Germany quite a lot bigger than Belgium. I think they had a training camp once a month for the entire weekend, so those people know each other. There's a big, yeah, big emphasis on, on teamwork in Germany. Like, even the, they've got cheerleaders on the other side of the field with pom-poms. Um, of course, they've got that home crowd. So. Got the home crowd. The stands are packed for this game. It's going to be awesome. We can hear ourselves think over the sound of the crowd. In Germany, in Germany scores. It's gonna be loud. Wow, even them cheering that ready is loud. <laughs> I'm so excited. So am I. It's gonna be And they are off! And Stefan DeWitt narrowly misses out on the quaffle. It's from Nora she can mess. It is a cluster in the middle. The quaffle is free. The quaffle is still on the floor. And the quaffle is off bounds. Who's going to inbound it? Okay, that was, that was a scrappy, scrappy start. I was expecting a lot neater than that. It was anticlimactic to stop a bunch of one seconds into the game. You made it far. I'm not sure it's all about. <laughs> they tried. Everybody got their hands on the quaffle. Everybody got to participate. Look at those sweaty hands. Like they go quite um, I said sweaty hands, but I know people were wondering what that was. Unluckily, not one of those quaffles that get super sticky once you've got sweaty hands. But it seems there's an injury on the German side. They already sub off one of the beaters during the stoppage. So Leon Burgers is now on pitch for Paul Fandler.
Sepper on the quaffle here, carrying it over the midline, not quite right in front of the midline and carrying it over. Obviously, you don't want to have to use those resets if you don't have to. I'm so sorry, I was going to commentate what they make, and I sent you a clip earlier, and they all look so different. Belgium, I didn't know yeah. what doing that. I was like, wait, wait, who is that? So sorry, that's why I was stumbling there. Because um, I saw Seppi De Witt, number 60, in the keeper. I didn't even recognize him. And I've seen him play for what? Five years, six years? I guess it was. I mean, he did change quite a lot in those five to six years, but... Yeah, and he got twice as bad as in Nigel Jordan. Almost twice the age. Almost twice the age. <laughs> it's ugly, it's ugly. Okay, Quaffle in the hands of Germany. Belgium had a shot, they didn't make it. It's still nil-nil. One minute and 23 seconds into the game, still nil-nil. And number 21 from Germany has the Quaffle. That's Christian Dimbleman. One of those all-rounder players that would be in national team level in all of the four roles we've got. So excited to see whether he will also bust out the beating this tournament. And that's the first score for Germany pulling ahead. Beautiful game. The keeper held back, took his chance, threw it, reached out opportunity, didn't rush in. That is a beautiful goal. Wow. If all the goals like this, I'm going to be speechless with excitement by about 10 minutes into the game. I could barely hear myself over those chants, so it's going to be an exciting game. And Louis Lemaitre just beat out uh, the German beater. Germany and Belgium quickly retaliated with a score. The score is 10 all. And bludger control on the side of the Griffins. So the offense will be a bit more difficult for the German side right now, so they might not be able to close it up again or pull ahead again. Of course, any uh, any defense, you've got Louis Lemaitre with the bludger. That's not what you want. Louis Lemaitre, number 33. Uh, King Louis, they call him. Oh, wow, amazing beat. Quaffles on the floor. Quickly, quickly picked up by Seppi DeWitt. Seppi DeWitt passes off to Nathan Wilpert, who pops it in. The ref has stopped the game. Do you think you saw why that was? Um, I think the German keeper knocked over the hoop while subbing back in, uh, while <laughs> remounting. Black, number 2-1. Yellow card. Illegal procedure. Unintentional illegal de deflection of a scoring opportunity. No penalty box time served. Goal is good. Yeah, so it was for knocking over the hoop. Belgium still scored, so he stays on pitch, but obviously first yellow card for him. So, of course, if he gets another yellow card, it'll turn into a red and he'll be off, which is not what you want. Again, less than three minutes into the game. And we've got a pass right behind the hoops. And no, he off sadly the field. can't he's make it. He's got a rolling dive to try and keep it back in. Yep, Belgium's going to have to inbound that one. So taking a bit of the tempo out of their offense, actually, for this one. And Germany will have to get back into defense. Louis is clearing all the bludgers in the middle of the field. And another pass pace attack from Team Belgium. Can't really stop that. Just and the ball in the hands of the German keeper stopped the offense from the Belgium. German keeper stopped that with his face. That was commitment. Number 21, Christian Zimmerman again. Can't, really can't underestimate how high th some of those players can jump. I think both teams should know it. If your chaser can jump as high, probably the defending keeper can as well. Funny that. <laughs> That's suspicious. Suspicious. Physics. The, cr the crowd is chanting defense, defense. That's good advice, I think. Keep up the defense. Can't go wrong with that one. Obviously, don't want to see the Belgians scoring here. Belgians facing not only 21 people, but roughly 200 more, I'd guess. Seems a bit lopsided, but 200 of those people can't actually interfere with the game, so might be a bit more even than it seems. Yeah, of course, a psychological advantage there, of playing at home with all of that crowd. The quaffle is loose. Oh dear, the referee has dropped all of his ref cards on the floor. That's unfortunate. One card for all of the bucks. So, small stoppage just to recover the cards. Inbounding for Belgium. Nathan and Wilpert with the ball. 
Nathan. 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 He says to me, he's like, Bix, it's okay, just say Nathan. He goes, Nathan okay. sounds stupid in your accent. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Okay. Nathan it is. And we're back in a Belgium in possession of the quaffle. Also still have bludger control. But Germany just recovered it. Yeah, number 88 for Belgium. Uh, she was playing quite aggressively there. Uh, Jona Piens um, is a rookie. She's only playing start of the season. But she used to do rope skipping as a competitive sport. I mean, it's, it's a jumpy spot, so fast break for Germany now, but the bludgers are back for Belgium. So they might have to reset that one, yeah. There's Hannah Grosse over there catching the quaffle. Yeah, Hannah Grosse. I could watch Hannah Grosse play Quidditch all day. She's amazing. Played on Team Norway last year, lost the game against Team Germany. While Team Germany scores this time, so she decided to come back over. <laughs> so the score is 20 both right now. Pretty even game. This is all we could ever hope for for this game, and I'm excited. I'm still very excited. Isn't, um, isn't Team Norway just a Team Germany training ground? Isn't that the, isn't that the joke? They train so many, Nor uh, so many Germans who go there for exchange. They come back. They make the German national team. Well, it's basically Germany has worked a lot on, on Kidditch, so youth Quidditch. But also, we can just take the people we sent to Norway. One of those players is actually playing for Team Germany right now. I think he's not on pitch right now, but he was on, in the famous NTNUI lineup that beat out the Titans in 2016, I think it was. That was, was it, was it 20? Match. I think it was 2017, actually. In Papenhoven, in Belgium? No, I think, yeah, in Mechelen, I think it was. Mechelen, sorry. Yeah. Papenhoven in Belgium. Sorry. That must have been so offensive to you. Sorry. Oh. It's Bavaria. Far away. Belgium's closer to me. <laughs> <laughs> this is scored by Hannah Hermans on the Belgian side. Quick alley-oop. Dunked it in from the air. Can't really stop that one once it got, gets to her. Paul, uh, number 22, the German beater is back on. He subbed off, he was the one who subbed off at the very start of the game, which means he's, he must be all right now if he's back on. He's sneaking up on the uh, Belgian beater from behind, trying to sneak up on them. So this is textbook Belgium, uh, Belgian beater, beater play, just sneaking up behind someone to recover that bludger control. And I, will, I will say it did look a bit like when that Belgian beater got beat, he was beat, therefore threw his hoop back, uh, his ball back to the hoop. And yeah. I'm gonna say there is a fine line between that. That's a very fine line. If you turn around, usually the ball doesn't go upwards, but sometimes it miraculously does. Yeah, but it's like you weren't planning on throwing your ball to the hoop five seconds before that, and now suddenly yeah. you are. I don't know. That's a rough call. It's difficult to it's difficult to make those kind of decisions, isn't it? Oh, that was a lovely goal. Oh, We're gonna have a clarification on that beat, whether it was before or afterwards. So we might see Belgium pulling ahead by 20 right here. Obviously a lot of people getting on pitch for the water. Goat stands, it's very hot, gotta keep hydrated. Timeout requested by Germany right now, so they wanna close that bag up, not get, let it get out of swim. Swim is obviously when the snitch catch will determine the outcome of the game, so that's anything that's a difference of maximum 30. I am loving Team Belgium and their umbrellas. It's we beautiful. Can, we're going to stop the sun, bring a, bring a parasol, good yeah. advice. And uh, we're panning to the crowd, as you can see, a huge crowd. They're cheering, they're loving it. They're like, yeah, timeouts, timeouts, woo, my favorite part of the game. Oh. While, while we've got the cheerleaders for Team Germany doing a pyramid over there. Oh wow, an actual cheerleading pyramid. We've got experienced cheerleader slash head ref slash DQB president Nicholas Müller helping them out, showing them all his tactics for the perfect pyramid. 
course. If it's not the perfect pyramid, yellow card, obviously. Yeah. Yellow card. That's great. I uh, Team Germany, what a great team. Of course, last uh, European Games, when we were in Norway, they showered their coach with a, what, 10 liter jug jar of, uh, of mustard. It was extra spicy mustard. Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't even know that detail. I just had to clean up the remnants. That the was <laughs> the champions that year, so everybody got showered, their coach, their captains, some of the Team Turkey players, they hugged afterwards. I everybody got some of that mustard. I can't think of anything worse than this tournament though being covered in mustard. Like being so hot and so sticky and you know, covered in mustard. That'd be the worst. That's yeah. The worst. I wouldn't want to be in that situation. <laughs> but I don't it'd think it'd be the worst. Yeah. The worst? Like the sausage because you're covered in mustard? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh uh, that okay, that was terrible. Yeah. I'm just gonna apologize to everybody. That was a terrible joke. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's very bad fun. Yeah. But it's the timeout's over and we're getting back into the game. So Germany's, uh, Germany's still 20 behind, but they've got the quarters. And Belgium setting up their defense with larger control again. Of course, so many of the Belgian team uh, were playing for the Dodos at EQC this year and they ended up fifth. Yeah, they ended up fifth after uh, an unlucky draw of the then to be champions in the Titans in the quarterfinal. So they only lost to the uh, eventual champions. But still, they were pretty, obviously, pretty heartbroken right. about it. They were going for that win. And another attack here by Germany going back and forth, trying to get that ball in the hoops. And it finally goes through. So we have. Back to 40-30, scores a bit more evened up now. Obviously only eight minutes in, so 10 more minutes till the Seekers get on and it really matters what the quarter point different difference will be at that point. Paul Funner running around, cherry picking all the quarter players. Obviously took some rest while he was out for that injury. But he's fully revitalized now. More revitalized than I am. My third cup of coffee for the day. I'm still chatting rubbish. I'm trying. I'm sorry, Matty. I'm trying. So am I. It's, it's hot. It's getting to all of us. Except for those players, apparently. But then that's why they're playing, and we're, all <laughs> and we're on the commentary team. So yeah. Which we're is the best team. We're the real winners here. We're just standing over here, talking in the shade, and still <laughs> losing all our energy. They're out there in the sun, sprinting, and running, and tackling people. Oh, oh! That was such a big hit by uh, Leander, but onto Leander that I actually felt that like. <laughs> <laughs> Team Germany passes. Oh, they cluttered into each other and the hoop. Yeah. If there's anything worse than one Belgian trying to hit you, it's two. Excellent. The ball, the play isn't over until your keeper has the ball. Germany so still recovering, bludger control. <laughs> um, still keeping it. Actually, no bludger on the side of Belgium right now. And Louis recovered it. So King Louis back on pitch, trying to swing this game back in it his team's favor. Obviously, the coach and the captain and the president of this NGB, so if anyone cares about what happens to that team, it's him. I just find it incredible respect for Louis. Like, it's one thing to be an amazing player, but also to take on such an administrative role as well. Like, that's really, that's dedication, isn't it? Yeah, he's he's been one of, if not the star player of his country for a while, to actually see him get into the administrative role. It's it's rare to see in Quidditch these days, but I'm excited for it. I think it's cool to do that. Once you commit, you gotta go full in, fully in. Oh, is that Hannah Grosser again? That was Hannah Grosser. Hannah Grosser. Also Hannah lost Grosser. quite a bit of hair for this tournament, so might People try to get- stop changing their hair and I could recognize them more easily, that would be great. During the first game, I was like, who's on pitch with that? Oh, okay, I know the name and the number. Looking from the distance, 
That's usually what you go by. Long shot attempt from Belgium, but sadly missed the hoop, only hit its base. Leon actually going for the no bludgers call before actually throwing that much confidence is what I like to see from players. Wow, calling no bludgers before you have no bludgers. That is amazing. If you know you're gonna hit, you might as well just call it. <laughs> yeah, that's the spirit. <laughs> Believe yourself. There's the expression, back yourself, back yourself. So if this goal stands, Germany will have pulled ahead after that timeout, which would make it a, a timeout that was actually very worth. So going down from going from being down 20 to being up 10 without actually having Belgium score on them. It's great for them. Players obviously very excited on pitch. I just think it just shows the difference where Belgium could hold it for such a long time, like on the national scene. And of course they did so well at World Cup last year. But each year Germany has so many more players that you can filter through and you can find the best. You know, they've got a training squad of 40, they've got a dev squad of what, 40 or more people. And then all of their players, hundreds of players. So it's Belgium is still maxing out, what, 15 teams? Yeah, just going by player size. If I'm not mistaken, Germany's actually the second largest Quidditch nation in the world right now with over 1,000 players. So only coming in behind the US. It's bound to show at some point. And another score. That was an amazing goal. He was already being, he was already going to the ground and he still popped it in. That was an amazing goal. It's that hunt, uh, the experience from Hanfell. That's, that's Janis Kleiner Peters. He started in Norway. He took down the Titans. He doesn't care about the Belgians. <laughs> I tell you, Team Norway, the Team Germany B team, right? Yeah. I can't tell them I said that. I mean, we've got the development team, and then we've got Team Norway, so. Yeah, amazing. And then so another no bludger situation created by the German beaters over here. The pass actually landing with the player, and Belgium still managed to score, so. Shouldn't happen on the German side, but very impressive, nonetheless, from the Belgians. And this is what is a great tournament, European Games. You've got all the best players coming together, and, you know, we've already saw a swim range France, Norway. No, the goal was definitely no good. He was Yeah, he was before. definitely beat before. Sadly, couldn't get his grip on there. Sadly, the crowd couldn't quite see that from this angle. And they were like, no, denied. Maybe they just tried the old chant loud enough and maybe it counts. I'm going to influence the game. Oh, wow. And Belgium actually pulling it back now, even again. Do we look like Belgium just got a second win? They suddenly like clicked into gear of what they're trying to do here. They were they were a bit spooked by Germany then and thought, oh no, we actually have to like put a bit more effort in. Yeah. Swept out a bunch of players. We've got number five, Soraya now on pitch for them. Seeing that now Germany taking it a bit slow on this offense. Going against. Going in for the drive from behind the hoops. Advantage being called for the side of Belgium. And now we're going to sort out that advantage call, I think. Yeah. I like the ref team we've got here. We've got Toby March, we've got Randhib, we've got players who, uh, sorry, refs who do not want to mess about. They make their call fairly quickly. Toby's in, out, call it. No lengthy waiting. Um, no, either it's a card or it's not. You can actually just go. I think it's going to be a card because Black Toby's number actually two, two. already. Yellow card, illegal contact, illegal slide. W no, thank you. One minute in the penalty box or until red scores. Goal is no good. So an illegal slide for number 22. That is very interesting, because from where we were standing, it looked like he hit him, but does he hit him? I'm not a Ultimately, the refs are quite a bit closer than we are, so well, I'm, I'm counting them. I don't want to be in this. I don't want to risk getting hit by a Belgian or a German. <laughs> I don't want to get hit by one of those gray bludgers either, so. What, not like being thrown by Leon? Absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> 
Now that having it being flown by Louis is that much more interesting. Oh, pleasing to get hit by. A lot of players being confused by the remount call here. So, goal is good. Of course, Toby refs at USQ, US footage. So maybe his whistling slightly different. Maybe, maybe. whistles in an accent and everyone's confused. Maybe. I don't know. People just started running for apparently no reason. That's mm -hmm. Sebastian Elster now coming in for the as a beater for the German side. Oh, and the pass immediately intercepted by Zeppard without actually even moving in position to intercept it, just jumping up. Yeah, he did rather pass it to him. Yeah, they pretty much gave it to him. And I think that's the difference when you're looking at these, you know, these elite teams, you're very lucky if you can capitalize on a mistake, because there are so few mistakes. Yeah, you're not I waiting for balls to drop, because the ball is not going to drop. People catch the ball, people get the ball on the hoop. Um, and that's what makes it so exciting. The fact it's 60-80 is not because both teams are so bad, it's because both teams are so good. Yeah, that's the thing. If you're a good team and you're playing against a bad team, you, you don't have to be proactive. You can be reactive and react to all the mistakes the other team does. If it's teams on this level, you gotta be proactive. They won't make the mistake. If you only wait for them to make a mistake, you're just gonna fall behind. Belgium is calling their timeout. No advantage being called for the side of Germany by one of the assistant refs. Ah, the umbrellas come out. But it's also a timeout, so maybe both. Yeah, let's just have both. Uh, let's bring it all together. Yeah, uh, I saw uh, Sepe, Sepe with, the, with the symbol. Yeah, it's also got the timeout clock running on the, on the pitch. Our new time board. And Working wonders over electronics there. Electronics into the game, how exciting. Finally getting digital. For analog me, but what can you do? Of course, if we're talking tech, Aurora Phoenix, with this great live stream setup, um, you've got, we've got a multiple camera situation here. We've got a guy up on scaffolding with his camera to zoom over people. Um, I think every, every event, they just get better and better. Yeah, they just get better and better. It's going to be exciting to see what's in store for us. With them. Will they move over to Richmond next year? Will the US admit that the best live stream comes from a small town in Germany, actually not that small, but maybe a 3D or VR in the future. Oh, VR would be would be exciting. Just walking on pitch, having um maybe not. I don't want to. Wanna you two can imagine being hit in the face. Yeah, by the, by you the two ball. can imagine just standing there Whoa! being charged at by someone like Zeppa David. Please don't. I don't want to. <laughs> Germany with the bludger control right now. Trying to regain that quaffle so they can even out the score a bit more. Trying to keep it in swim range. I just think you it, it's just very, very hard to counter. You've got your players right now. I think you've got Tim on the field. You've got Nathan. All these guys have just played together for such a long time now. I'm doing six years together. Yeah. Week in, week out, multiple times a week, multiple tournaments. You, they just, it's very, very hard to train for that. Because Germany, mad respect, they, all these teams of players come from lots of different teams, which is really great. It means the depth is there in Germany across the country. Yeah, they changed up the training schedule for this year with the, with the team actually practicing about once a month for an entire weekend. So they've got an advantage on a bunch of countries, but not on the Belgians. And of course, my favorite thing about the Germans and the Austrians is those knee pads they seem to love. The thing about Germany is there's a bunch of teams that actually practice on turf or artificial grass. And if you practice on that, you want those knee pads. For example, Fischer, number four for Belgium passes. P attempted but to pass, intercepted. Julia actually fighting for the quaffle. Might have had a shot if not for her beaters betraying her and already being in defense. Yeah, she was kind of a lone man, uh, a lone wolf there. Hey, worth a try. Worth a try. <laughs> Another stoppage of play. Yeah. 
So one of the Team Germany beaters accidentally dismounted and didn't notice. Sometimes so like that. we might have a discussion on whether that had any further impact on the play right now. Belgium already recovered the bludger she was holding. Yeah, so we just got a clarification on that. So Belgium and offense again with bludger control now. Quick sub on the side of Germany. Julia Panagni going out for Hanna Grosse again, so. Got this arguably physically stronger uh, player back on pitch for the defense. So something about a bunch of teams have shifted to, to just Swap your quaffle players, depending on whether it's offense or defense, so everybody can play to their strength. Some of the spectators being not too excited about what looked like a bit of a late pass from one of the Belgian players after being beat. Yeah, it looked to me like she just fallen through that ball, but as it happened, yeah. it didn't change the game that much. Uh, but Hannah Grossa still has the quaffle, passes back to the keeper. Keeper with the ball, keeper number 12, as Zimpelman again, no it's not. No, that's Heinrich Ostenmeier. Ostenmeier. From Bielefeld. One of the teams that surprised many at EQC Division 2 this year. Where did they finish, can you remember? I think they were the team that actually ranked the lowest at 5th by getting Leipzig very early. An illegal reset by the German side here. Leon tried really hard to stop the ball, stop, stop the quaffle with his bludger. But obviously didn't want to risk the bludger too much because Seekers are, have just entered pitch three seconds ago. And it's a swim range game, so you want to keep those bludgers. If Belgium, uh, if Germany catch now, the crowd is going to go absolutely wild. That crowd will go wild, yeah. I can assure you of that. And the Seeker for Germany, Jan Kola. He's almost two meters tall. He's got those very long arms, but he's beat. And Sav, the seeker for Belgium, Savinin Massim, nicknamed Spider-Man by his team because of his gangly arms. And not, I guess, his ability to swim through New York. So we've got two of those very long-armed seekers coming in. Also one of the, mod, one of the tallest snitches, so that's even up. And Germany scores in the meantime to get it back to 70-80. Is it all about the snitch? I would hate to be that snitch. Wouldn't you? I mean, he did the EQC final. He's done important games before, so. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad I'm not him, is what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I also so wouldn't want to be the snitch against two players that, in my case, are actually twice my size, so <laughs> it's never fun. We've got Max Martens coming in now. To Germany, the German beaters are bubbling. Uh, they're both around the seeker. Oh. Right now, they're just ignoring the quaffle game. They could still concede a couple, and it yeah, they would can still matter. It would still be okay. One or two at this point. Oh! Why did the snitch just tackle one of the seekers? I it looked like he looked like he was about to get caught through fouls on the floor, if I'm honest. Yeah, it looks a bit weird. Can I say that? Yeah, you can I just say that. Did. Snitching, of course, is the biggest variable in the game. Uh, you've got the bludgers to contend with, you've got... And the German Seeker sneaks up to the snitch and now, catches it. It looked a little bit like the snitch was on his way down. And then, of course, the Seeker ran away before the it was called down, before the end of the play. Yeah, but by looking at the snitch and being so disappointed in himself, I don't think he was down already. If he was down already, he would have actually caught that by now, I think. But what about the fact that the Seeker was running away before the game had finished? Was running with the tail? I mean, I mean, it'd be a technicality. It would be an it, absolute technicality. It would be a technicality, but it doesn't matter because everything that happens after the snitch catch doesn't matter. He could start insulting people and get a straight red. If the snitch catch is good, it's good. It's one of those weird loopholes. Well, it's not actually a loophole. The snitch catch happened before, so it's like that's a very good point. Someone after scoring doesn't matter. The score still stands. Oh, that's true. It might affect the next score, but with the snitch catch, there is nothing. You know your rules a lot better than I do, Matty. I swear I've played a game before. 
up, I swear. Believe me, believe me. I seeked one time. <laughs> I'm, I'm supposed to be a seeker, but I end up being more defensive than offensive most of the time, so I don't know that much about, cat, about catching either. We had a Queen's Cup, which was a women's only tournament in the UK a few weeks ago. I was MVP seeker, so I did catch two snitches. But so I knew a little, a little bit about it, but not at this level. Of course, I'd be just like, oh no, what am I yeah. doing? I'm really interested to see what's going to happen and whether those stands will erupt with chance if Germany actually wins this one. If they win and win their group today, I think they actually locked in at least sixth place, so. But they obviously have to win against Austria after this one first as well, and win this one. And Austria-Germany, the biggest rivalry of all of the rivalries in Quidditch, that's the, one of the biggest. I mean, it's not even a Quidditch rivalry specifically, because it's... <laughs> it's sports, it's life. <laughs> yeah, it's more like regional rivalry, it's not... I mean, I don't think it's close anymore in Quidditch, but... Oh, I'm that's fighting talk, German. That's fighting talk. I'm obviously a bit biased on this one, so... Hey, I'm moving to Austria in September. No, oh, so we'll see you on the next national team yeah, next year. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Not a secret, though. I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with <laughs> snitches getting bulky and bulky, yeah, I don't want to... Hmm. Yeah, back in the day... When you know, catch is good. Oh my and the goodness, catch, catch is good. good. Germany beats and the Germans Belgium. are super excited. You've got people running on from everywhere. Team Turkey is excited because Germany won. It's one of those friendships you get in Quidditch. <sighs> Standing ovations from the crowd. Belgium looking. Belgium is looking mad. There are some mad I looking disappointed Belgians. They're mad. I would advise the German photographer to get out of there. <laughs> Yeah, we only really tried to capture good emotion. Yeah. Uh, nobody wants nobody wants pictures of people upset. Wow, that and was great. Germany dancing on pitch, super excited, obviously. That's the kind of emotion you want to see in Quidditch. I think it was all you, Matty. You wanted Germany to win. The words that they couldn't hear right now, they powered them through. Yeah, it's, when they go back and look at that game, my voice will be there. It's going to haunt Belgium in their dreams. It's going to be great. It's basically the only reason I wanted to commentate this game. <laughs> that wasn't to keep me company. Obviously as well. Just because help me, there's so many German players and you know them all. I'm like, oh, the German one. The German, that one. But hey, everyone's lining up to shake hands now. Yeah, so. Good sportsmanship rules out overall. Good. In the end, it's Even always. Even if you're mad on the inside. And congratulations on your first commentary in English. It was fun. fun. Thanks for having me. Oh, no, thank you for joining me. Put your back out carrying me. <laughs> yeah, so... I think oh, and we've got a replay. We've got a replay of, of the snitch catch. So there's some arguments about one of the Belgian beaters claiming he beat the German seeker. And I think the snitch ruled him out already and just didn't know he was still in game. It's one of those catches you just got to make. I've been in that situation before and it just feels awful if you don't make it. Yeah, I feel like I need to watch that back about eight more times to decide. Yeah. I think we have to wrap it up now. Then my heart stopped pounding after all that excitement. So yeah. I might go get an ice cream. So we're anyway. going to give it over to the analysts for now and have them break down this super exciting game for us. So much to say. Thank you very much. I've been Bex McLaughlin. I've been Matty Gantenberg and see you for the next game.
All right, what a game that was. Yeah, you can say that loud, AJ. <laughs> Second upset of the tournament, potentially, after Norway beating France. Now we have Germany beating Belgium. How do you feel about that? I mean, uh, AJ, as a German, of course, I feel delighted. <laughs> but I mean, that was an incredible suspenseful game. And I mean, if you play this game 10 times, I wouldn't know how to, who the, which team would beat like the other team six times. I would say these teams match up pretty even. And yeah, in the end, Germany had the upper hand in this one. It was very, very interesting. It was a very back and forth game, I felt. Like one time, um, Germany had the upper hand, then Belgium, then Germany, then Belgium. Um, but control all over the place. Um, so yeah, it was a very, very back and forth game. Yeah, I think what the Belgians did incredibly well is taking away any single driving play the Germans had. Mm -hmm. There was no driving effort in the offense by the Germans because the Belgian defense was really, really set on, on uh, interrupting that uh, first few steps immediately and it worked great for them. But in the end, uh, Germany, they prevailed by passing and cutting in front of the hoops and some troll play. Yeah, I think the, the Germans did a really good job of accepting that, you know, Belgium is an incredibly physical, physically strong yes, team. Are. People like Emil and Seppo on defense, you can't, you can't just run through them. They did a fantastic job of taking that first hit and getting that pass off out of that first hit, taking Seppo or Emil, whoever it was, out of that defense. And all of a sudden, one of their players has a clear run from the, from the front of the hoops in an open lane. Absolutely. Very, very smart offense. And I got to say, the offense of Belgium was really, really awesome to see. I mean, their mm. passing game, even under pressure, was on point. Balls were caught immediately and I mm -hmm. gotta say, that's gonna be very good in the finals, or like in the uh, later games, as games tend to get more pressure and uh, get faster. And that seemed where the Germans had a little bit of trouble. Like some of these passes were sloppy in the end, mm -hmm. and they really could use like quick transition games more than the Belgians did, in my opinion. Yeah, I think if there's one thing you can rely on from Belgian Quidditch, it is amazing passing on offense. Yeah. Um, used to be the the Sepe and Luis show. Now it's Sepe and Emil, and goodness knows how many other uh, players they have who are all such amazing passes. Um, even on a like, with no budgets on offense for the two bladed defense, um, I believe it was Hannah Hermans who was taking like amazing alley from yeah. behind the hoops. Yeah. Um, I think the Germans' defense did a fantastic job of like a kind of like almost a semi sort of zone defense, picking up players as they came in, trying to mark them out. And Belgian um, offense um, in counter to that did a really good job on especially in the middle of the game, taking their time on yeah. offense, moving the ball around a lot more. Um, and really working to get the Germans out of their defensive zone and open up those pockets for uh, Sepe or whoever it was to run in. I think, and, and also like, we saw like a beating game which was really like on a great level. I mean, seeing Leon going against versus Louis was just incredible. See, I can't wait mm -hmm. to get home and like we watched some of these scenes, it was impeccable timing and yeah, and I think in the end we have to talk about this key scene, like the catch of a snitch. Um, Belgian will, uh, I think some Belgian players like um, called for a beat on Max, mm -hmm. and I gotta say it was a close one. Uh, Max, in to be fair, waited a long time for any refs to call him beat. Mm -hmm. There was no such call, and so he went for it. And yeah, if I were you guys, I would like rewind a bit and look at that myself. <laughs> but from here on, it seemed like a clean catch. But of course, with the snitch going and with back to a seeker, it's always. Yeah, it, it makes you feel. I mean, it's, so it's it's hard to see from our angle, I think, yeah. whether Max was beat or not. And but so there's no there's no call that he was beat. Yeah. And I think it was the the big mistake there was assuming that he was beat with no call and playing on as if he wasn't beat. Yeah. Partially because of the dish, partially also. You know, Katrien was there. And I think she sort of thought he must be beat. I can go for the beaters. Yeah. And just left him open for the for the stitch catch. I mean, in the end, I think Belgium had the upper hand in the uh, ch uh, quaffle game before the snitch on pitch, mm -hmm. but Germany stayed in it and it paid off by being only 20 behind and catching that snitch. And I think in the end, this win goes to their credit mm -hmm. and we'll see if that uh, match can happen again. And I think both teams like should maybe match up pretty even again if they meet each other again. Yeah, if they keep playing as smart as they, ha as they have been, um, they can go very, very far in this tournament, both of them. Um, I wonder, like, what would you change uh, from a different approach if you were like either of these teams? I think for the Germans, I would maybe like try to engage more of the red troll action because the mm -hmm. troll plays actually work pretty good. They had their female chasers on the back line, receiving some of these passes, always being very dangerous because the driving game, I think, of uh, the driving defense of Belgium is too, 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 bad, bad, mm -hmm. too, uh, too good for Germany. Yeah, I think, so it's, it's hard to say what to do better because I think both teams did a very, very good job and played very, very smart Quidditch. Yep. Um, in terms of Germans troll game, I think they actually did a very good job of um, alternating between using the trolls and using their fo like using their players in front of the hoops. Yep. I don't think you can you you can't especially against a team like Belgium. You can't use the same strategy more than twice in a row. Really, yeah. you had to keep you had to keep changing it up, and they did that really well. And they did a really good job of using their troll players. And their troll players not just going straight for the goal, but also going for a pass off and then a goal or like a couple yep. of passes around the hoops, making the Belgians move around and waiting for the correct opportunity. Um, I think they did it very well. I think. Um, 
maybe being slightly more conservative in their beta game, especially when they're... Um, the Belgians, you mean? Or, to an extent, both. Both, to an extent, both teams. I think both okay, teams right. are very... Especially when you've got players like Leon or Louis, um, very, very happy with those big throws. I think Louis spent a lot of time in that set shot pitch um, um, making big throws from long distance, and a lot of them didn't end up connecting. The it took a lot of time for Belgium to get control back on the set pitch. Yeah. And it was only just as I got control back that Max was able to get that catch. Um, and so uh, Leon and um, Lena did a fantastic job in that first couple of minutes of pitch. Yeah. Also the first couple of minutes of the game, to be honest. Um, Lena Stura did a fantastic job um, as a German beater, um, keeping control and getting control back in various moments off sort of big throws and that kind of thing. So I think being much more aware of how fast your opposition beaters are mm -hmm. um, in picking up your sort of missed beats or like um, beater ricochets. Yeah. So I think we watched a great game, a quite fair game. There were some cards on the German sides, but I must, I must say I, must, I was really impressed by the, mm -hmm. by the players' uh, fair play. As soon as somebody was uh, beat and it was even like only just a flick maybe yeah. of, of the gloves, balls were dropped, very fair play. Heads mm -hmm. off to both teams. It was a great game. I'm very happy that we had this on live stream, man. Yeah, no complaints about this game. Yeah, so we hope you have more of these games in for, uh, for you guys in the next few minutes. But for now, me and AJ have to get back into the shade as it's scorching hot in here. And I hope you guys at home have some drinks. Take care, you have like a few minutes until the next game, and yeah, stay tuned. And welcome back to EG 2019. I am here with Mr. Troll from the German national team. And what a game it has been. They have just secured a win against Belgium. Yeah, I'm still completely overwhelmed. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> no. Oh, well, I hope I can lead you into a couple of questions. First of all, I just wanted to start off by saying, you know, Germany, what, what was their ranking at last World Cup? Um, our ranking at last World Cup was seventh. So yeah. you're aiming, and this World Cup, I, uh, sorry, this uh, European Games, I believe you were aiming for top three, mm -hmm. and you mentioned yeah, we that we had you had a few different paths and tactics to get to that spot. Yeah. But now you've gone, you say, the hardest route to get to this point. Yeah, so what's sort of next for Team Germany for the next two days? How are you and your team gonna treat yourselves? How are you going to make sure that you keep that mentality for those mm -hmm. top three spots? Um, yeah, what, what helped us um, focus on the games uh, really well was just have fun with the team together. The last two days, we were pretty much at the swimming pool and playing spike ball and stuff like that and just doing team stuff and then just before the games we came into focus and yeah just focused on what we did so I think we're gonna keep doing yeah. that your chants <laughs> are just amazing for anyone who hasn't seen you have about five or six different chants with dance moves and instruments uh, also we have a chant for every single person on the team oh so, wow so any cool action will be rewarded oh <laughs> yeah. that's so, so cool everybody has their individual chance yeah. oh, and do um did you have uh, but when like you were saying earlier when you go into the game what was it that your coach and the captains were saying to the team, what was the, the goal there? What was the yeah. mentality? You were coming up against the Belgians, yeah. very intimidating opponent. Yeah. Everyone was quite somber, quite serious. So what was the mood like when you started that um, game? Well, we knew beforehand that we have like two routes, two different routes to get to our medal. Um, and this was actually the harder route. So we knew if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen today. We're going to secure the win tomorrow um, against a different team. So that was the mentality we were going for and not uh, focus too much on the result today, but just focus on how we play, just focus on the team, teamwork. <laughs> oh, brilliant. And yeah. so how long have you been playing Quidditch yourself? 
Uh, since 2014. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, so it's been a while. Quite yeah. a while. So, and how many World Cups and uh, European games have you been to uh, now? Each one so far. Every so single 216 one. 216 in Frankfurt and 217 in Oslo. Fantastic. And last year in Florence, yeah. And we're going to see you in more uh, more tournaments to come, I hope, for the uh, next 10 yeah, years I, or so. I think there is like one or two more good years in, in myself. Yeah. yeah? No. I, I might keep playing. <laughs> yeah. Because you're, you're part of sort of the leadership in uh, Team Germany. So. Um, no, not really. I'm no? Just, a, just a player this year. You're just a player this year? <laughs> yeah. Sort of winding it down a little bit? Uh, yeah? Uh, yeah, well, um, uh, I was the captain once in, uh, mm. in one year in Oslo. Uh, but this year uh, we have two new captains. Uh, Julia Punyagi and uh, Max Martins and yeah and then we have our coaching staff doing a great job. Yeah. Fantastic and how are you handling this heat as well because we're starting to get <laughs> up to about 34, 35 yeah. degrees I can already feel everything <laughs> I don't even know just standing still I can just I everything just feels completely <laughs> drenched in sweat how are you even coping in this insane heat? Uh, yeah we just try to ignore it and just, just <laughs> like the trick is to stay out of the sun and then we have amazing support staff spraying up with cool water and mm. bringing us like electrolyte water and and just, yeah, we're yeah. just being supported really well. <laughs> you had someone with this giant bucket and a massive hose just yeah, hosing yeah, yeah. everyone down exactly. before the also, game. Like, the sponge in the neck is really nice when you just get yeah. off the field and you get cooled down a bit. Yeah. The tactics that we have, we've got like floating unicorns <laughs> and different ice bars and all sorts yeah. of things going down here in Bamberg yeah. today. It feels a bit more like Morocco, I think, than Bamberg. But yeah. yeah, it's fine. <laughs> but we've been lucky. We've been lucky, I guess. Yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is, is there anyone in particular that you wanted to thank here in Germany or? Um, for sort of getting Team Germany to where it is now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I think I think it was great teamwork by the coaching staff, especially this year. They made um, they did like a, an amazing job uh, with team building and also building the right mentality for this. Um, and then all the fans and everybody who's here supporting us, uh, like the Elsters um, during the physio stuff, and also yeah, it's just. Yeah, everybody who's supporting us. Um, I'll probably forgot people. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> but no, thank you so much for joining us. Um, but thank you, and th thank yeah. you so much for giving, taking a bit of a time for a chat. Yeah. Thanks for um, having me. We are going to be having our next game momentarily, so stick with us, and we'll catch you soon.